So now we have NPM installed. We are gonna install some of the, the standard dependencies specifically for this guide, right? So these dependencies, one of them of course is being TypeScript. The other ones will will basically kind of explain as we use them. Um, but of course there's jQuery and then there's also HTTP server. So there's, there's definitely other ones that we want, might wanna work with. Now to install these, um, it's really simple. You're just gonna go ahead and copy and paste those. But what I'm gonna do is actually move into my dev project and I'll just do make dir and I'll say TS setup. So TS as in TypeScript and I'll just say setup like that and we're gonna change into TS setup. Um, now if I look at where I am, of course these are folders or directories that I've created. You can do the same if you'd like, um, but I do recommend actually working in one folder specifically for what we're about to do. So let's go ahead and do the installations. First of all, we're gonna install TypeScript. Um, I actually already have TypeScript installed, but I get this permission denied error. So I'll just do sudo in front of it. And then the permission denied error goes away. So depending on what system you're on, you might have to run sudo to install each one of these things. Um, as would be evident when you installed um, NPM or when you updated NPM itself. So I'm actually gonna pause it for a moment and just go ahead and install the other ones. Cool, so everything was downloaded um, as you see here, jQuery, TS Loader, and HTTP server. So all that stuff's done. Now we're ready to actually work in TypeScript. So TypeScript of course is its own language, so it has um, .ts. Um, so when you use TypeScript files, you'll see .ts instead of like .js or .py, so .ts. Um, so what we're gonna do here is actually open up Sublime Text and I'm gonna create a new project in here for this particular project. And we're gonna put it in TS setup. I'm gonna open this up and then I'll save this project as TS setup dot sublime project. Okay, um, oops, we should probably save it inside of that same folder, not in this other one. So we'll go back into our dev folder, TS setup and TS setup. Okay, there we go. So inside of here, we're gonna make our new file and we're gonna call it, um, well, what do we call it before? We probably called it main.ts. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And we've got main.ts. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste these things in here for now. Um, and then I'm also gonna set up tsconfig. So I'll go ahead and copy this file here and do tsconfig.json. We paste that in there, okay? And then finally, we're gonna run TSC or TSC-watch. So what we're doing here is we're basically creating our TypeScript file, then we're adding some configuration to it. So the configuration being as we see something called outdir, and then we have common JS. So let's go ahead and go into our folder again, as we see here. And if I run TSC and press enter, um, it runs something, but what we notice actually in this folder, we now have something called main.js. So this is TypeScript compiling into JavaScript. That's what just happened. Um, so TSC compiles that for us. Um, and this is really, really cool. So as we see, I'll explain this code later, but what we see here is it turned into variable suite class or um, basically a function and it returns a, another function. So when I make something like a basil, basically this basil thing will just only call console log even sweeter. Now we can test this out in actual HTML, which we'll do um, in just a moment, but I also want to install a package for TypeScript. So inside of um, using Sublime Text, notice that this isn't giving me any code highlighting where um, JavaScript is. So if I do Command Shift P and I look for the package installer, so install package control, and now it was installed. Then I wanna do package control install package and we'll look for TypeScript. And I'm just gonna use that first one there. And I might have to actually close out the TypeScript file and I do. So now I've got TypeScript code syntax stuff uh, inside of here. So, so that is something for Sublime Text. Of course, if you're using another text editor other than Sublime Text, and in this case, we're using Sublime Text, um, you know, version three. 
If you're using a different text editor, that's fine. It's not gonna be a whole lot different um, other than how maybe the, the, the actual text editor renders or checks the text that you end up doing. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and create a new document or a new page. And we're gonna go ahead and make it index.html. And I'm really just putting index.html, I'm just gonna add in this main.dst, right? So I just added some basic index stuff and I'm adding in that JavaScript there, right? So I'm not adding in TypeScript, I'm using JavaScript because that's actually what you want. You want the compiled version that TypeScript comes from to make the JavaScript. And this becomes a lot more clear when we get a little bit more complicated than what we have so far. Um, so now that I've got that, I can actually run something called TSC watch. And what this does is it's watching for file changes. So if I said even more sweet and save that, it actually compiles and does those changes as we go. Um, we will definitely do this a lot more. So, so don't worry if this is like going maybe a little too fast for you or something like that. Um, don't worry about that at this point. But I will open up a, a new terminal window and I'll go into dev and I'll change into TS setup again. And remember how we installed HTTP server? This right here, we're actually gonna run that on our file. So we'll do HTTP server and it do dash C dash one. Um, what dash C dash one does means that it's, it's not caching the files. So when we make changes, changes don't get cached. So we can easily make changes. So now if I open up that, the actual server that's being run, as it says, it's available on these two um, URLs. And I open up the JavaScript console with command alt um, J or command option J. We see even more sweet here. Okay, so if I change this and I'll just say, yeah, sweet. Save that. Um, notice I actually saved it. I hit command S to save it. It made some changes for me. I go refresh in here. We see console log is working. Okay, so that is actually setting up the guide up into a point, right? Like there's definitely a lot more stuff to it than we have to do here, but this is the first part of the guide that's doing the setup. So I just wanna recap real quick as to what we did. First of all, we did the installations necessary, right? So we did that, that's not a big deal. And then we made a TS file. So in our case, we called it main.ts. And we just wrote some basic code here. We created something called a class and we used this syntax. Granted, we will do more of this, so don't worry if the syntax isn't making sense yet or even what let is doing and stuff like that. We'll definitely cover those things. After we made this main.ts, we made a TS config file. Now this file is important to kind of understand generally how it's gonna be compiled. So when we run TSC, this TS config goes off of this for com uh, like our compiler. The compiler meaning taking that TSC or TS file and then turning it into a JS file or a JavaScript file and that JavaScript file is the file we can use on index.html. So we created a basic index file and we used the compiled JavaScript. That's what that main.ts file is. Of course, if we wanted to change where that output directory is, we could just say output or out um, and really simply say that. The compiling should actually detect what I just did by after saving it. And it did, it, it made another file. And if I said ABC and hit save or control S, it makes another one, right? So, so this actually is really cool for us. Um, and then when we use that command TSC watch, it actually watches all of those changes. Very, very cool, very useful. Um, it's very useful, especially if you're like working from, let's say for instance, Python, this is similar if you were using Django when you do the run server and when you make changes on any Python file and you refresh the page, it actually works. But in this case, it's, it's like taking one language to another. So it's actually doing a lot, of, a lot more work than just the standard Django run server, if, if that's what you're familiar with. But as you notice, we actually have two things running. So I have a server running, but I also have TypeScript watch running. So that's kind of the bigger thing there. So if you have any questions on the first portion of this setup, let us know. 
Um, of course, this guide right here is really going to be covering it, but there's still a lot more things that we want to do for TypeScript. I'm actually going to do some more examples in the next one before we actually jump into Webpack.